everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today I am going to be making one more final project for my Disney World trip for Dapper Day, which is really, really soon. In fact, by the time you're watching this, I might even be home from that trip. So I got it into my head that I thought it'd be really fun to have some sort of skirt or jumper or some sort of something that would be kind of a Disney bound for what the Cinderella castle currently looks like. So if you're not aware, Disney World has totally decked up Cinderella's castle for the 50th anniversary of Disney World. And currently it looks like this. And it's so beautiful, like the color scheme just so beautiful. So a lot of people have been doing these like Cinderella Castle Disney bounds. Of course, naturally, as soon as I got it in my head that I wanted to do this and I tried to look for some of those pictures that I had seen in the past, I couldn't find a single one of them. So I'm going just completely freehand here, making up this project as I go. And I had originally seen this one fabric at Joann's that was like, oh, wow, that'd be perfect. And then I went to go actually like take the fabric off the bolt and it was like polyester stretch knit with glitter that shed everywhere. Like it might have even shed more than the glitter tool I used for the spider web skirt. So that was going to be a no. And so I basically shelved the project until I found this fabric this beautiful sequined fabric. So this is kind of a rose gold mesh with a blue and rose gold sequin on it, like sewn onto it. And in other words, it is perfectly the colors of the castle. Like it is just absolutely perfect. The one problem here was that Joann's had uh, it's two and something yards. I don't even remember if it's two and a half. It might be less than that. But in other words, not a lot. Now, this is fairly wide fabric, but it also has a huge selvage where there are no sequins. So really, it's not nearly as wide as it states either on the bolt. So my dilemma now is what can I make out of this? Because I just got this idea in my mind that I just absolutely have to use this, but I don't have a lot of it. And I don't wanna go around to other Joann's trying to find more. So my goal is with this two and a bit yards to make something. Now, I can make a skirt, that's not a problem, but I do really love jumper dresses. And I don't wanna go for a full jumper dress on this. I really like that style where it's kind of almost like a large waistband right here, and then it straps. And I've done that once before for a Disney dress and it worked out quite well. But the thing is that I'm not planning on using that pattern because that pattern, they are panels that start up here and are cut in one all the way down with no seam. And I don't feel confident enough that I have enough fabric that I can actually do that. I think that takes more fabric than I have. So my thoughts today are I am going to make a skirt with this and then see how much fabric is left and see if I can make the wide waistband and straps that go with that so that it can be more than just a skirt. And the fabric that I'm planning on using for my underlayer is this blue cotton twill. I can't remember if this is the same as my Hussif dress fabric, but I think that it might be. So my House of Dress was one of my Halloween costumes from last year, 2020. I will link that video down below, but I am pretty sure this is the fabric I used. It's just a periwinkle cotton twill. And it goes very, very nicely with this gorgeous sequin. So, I mean, oh, look at that. Look at that. So pretty. So anyway, I am hoping that I can finish this whole project in about two days and and we'll see if it actually works because at the time of filming this I have basically a week from today I will already be in the parks so I have less than a week until I leave and I still need to film some other videos and edit this video and stuff like that you know pack all of those sort of things before I actually go on this trip so this is gonna be a really hopefully quick project and I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible. Now my plan for the skirt is to basically do as wide of a skirt as I can at the bottom, as in like the width of the fabric, and then have it 
narrow up a little bit, not a ton, to the waist. Maybe have a little bit of gathering, probably have a little bit of gathering. I don't know what I'm doing here, but probably have a little bit of gathering. And I only have enough length that I can get two skirt panels. So that's the thing. If possible, I may be able to get a gusset or two or a gore or two for the skirt to widen it a little bit, but this is not going to be a super spinny skirt like I have been making lately. There's just not enough width for that. So I am going to first figure out my cutting plan and what I can get out of this. I mean, my plan is to still make it the skirt length that I like, which is about like 31 inches. And basically to just cut that. So I'm gonna draw that out really, really carefully and get to cutting. So two things before I actually snip snip on the fabric is that one, I decided to measure the fabric before cutting it, you know, cause that would be a smart thing to do. And I actually think that I have more like three yards instead of like two and a bit. So that is fantastic. Also, even though it's got such wide selvages, the sequined part is still 60 inches wide. So yay. And then the third thing is that this fabric, I don't know how well you can see this, but this fabric has this pleated texture in it. And that pleated texture causes the length of the fabric to be stretchy. So in other words, it stretches on the grain of the fabric, which I feel like is unusual. The cross grain has a little bit of stretch, but it's held in place mostly by the sequins. The grain though, the sequins actually like allow that stretch. So my thought was, first off, to have a skirt that would stretch would be really bad when part of the skirt's gonna be on the bias anyway, like the sides of each seam. And secondly, if I have three yards, then that, while it allows me three panels, might not allow me enough for the tall waistband and the straps on top of it. And it just seems like it would make more sense overall to attempt to press this fabric as much as possible. Now, before I even decided that I was keeping this fabric, I did do a press test right on the corner. It presses just fine with a lower setting, like a silk wool type setting. It presses just fine. And although the accordionness of the pleats doesn't go completely away, it does get it to a point where it is less stretchy. Like I've done this little bit already and you can see it's a lot less stretchy than say like down here where there's a lot more of that stretch. So I do think that it helps. I think it's gonna be worth it to take that time to press this all out. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna press it all and then cut it in three panels. So part of my philosophy with a fabric like this, when you're cutting it out, it's just gonna squidge. Like there's nothing you can do about that. So I laid out my first bit and folded the fabric in half and at least this fabric, because of the sequins, it's not shifty, but it also like will just stick to itself. So hopefully it's on grain, who knows? But I laid it out and then I used my ruler to draw out 31 and a half inches all like this. It's not gonna need a hem because it's meshed. So it doesn't need a hem at all. It's not gonna get one. It just needed a half inch seam allowance up here. And so I've obviously done like a kind of circular-ish thing. So basically I just drew this out a little bit larger than one one sixth of my waistline plus seam allowance. So basically this is seven and a half inches this way. And that will give me just a little bit of like ease into the waistband. I didn't want gathering or anything with this one. So then from here, I drew out 31 inches all the way down here. Before I cut all of that, I did draw it on with friction pen, which surprisingly worked. Hopefully it will iron off because obviously you can see things in sheer mesh. But before I actually cut it, I went and I pinned a bunch of places all around the edges. I don't even think you can see most of these pins hiding in the sequins, but I pinned it so that I could potentially use the first one that I cut as the pattern for the other pieces. So that's what I've been doing. This is the last piece here. You can see there is just a little bit of this fabric left. So I am a little worried about the wide waistband. Like this is enough for a normal waistband or maybe for those straps, but the wide waistband pieces will all have to come out of the off cuts here. So I don't know for sure that it will be possible. We'll have to mock that up and see. But here we are with the skirt pieces and, okay, I have to admit something. You're all gonna hate me, don't hate me 
but this sort of fabric, unless you've got a really, really freaking sharp craft scissors, you have to cut it with fabric scissors. I know cutting with fabric scissors on sequins is not good for your fabric scissors, but this sort of fabric, this mesh that just is so sheer and catches on everything is not going to cut with craft scissors or paper scissors unless yours are like brand new spanking sharp. Mine will not cut this. So I have to cut it with my fabric scissors. I've done stuff like this before. I try not to. I've done it maybe three times in the life of my scissors. They've never needed to be sharpened and I've had them for like 11 years. So anyway, I'm going to cut this last piece out. So as you saw, I have cut out my three sequin pieces for the overskirt of this skirt. And I just went to cut out the cotton portion for the underskirt and found out that I certainly did use this for something because I only have, I think maybe less than two yards of the full width of this fabric. And the rest of this fabric is not the full width. It was all rolled on my little bolt. It's not the full width at all. Some of it is like, no width at all. So uh, the underskirt is clearly going to be less voluminous than the overskirt because I just don't have the fabric. I'm going to try to get as much as I can. I might be able to piece possibly some pieces because this is still quite wide. So we'll see how this goes, but it's obviously not going to be as easy as I thought it would be. So I finished cutting out all of the lining-ish or underskirt layers for this. There actually wound up being even less fabric than I thought there was when I last spoke to you. So there was only about one yard that was the full width of the fabric. This fabric though was very wide, like much wider even than the sequin fabric. I think it must have been like 68 inches wide, very, very wide. But basically every yard it got narrower. So there were probably about four yards total all connected, but the last yard and a half were like this wide across. And then we had like the full width and then we had not wide enough to cut the skirt on the full. So basically I've got one panel that is the full and then four panels that are half. So those are going to be the side back panels and I'm just seaming together the middle. So each one of those is going to have a center seam, which hopefully you won't be able to see because it will be under the sequin layer. And then the front, which would be the most obvious, that one won't have that center seam. So that is good. So there are three seams from the exterior as in the sequins. There's two seams here and then there's one in the center back. So these two seams here, they're going to have the pockets in them. So the pockets will be farther forward here but of course you can't just forgo pockets so we've got the pockets right here and then in the back I'm gonna do the zipper in the back so this is going to be kind of similar to what I've done in things like the spooky spider web skirt or the strawberry dress last year where you have that sheer layer over and you're still building pockets in but I think in both of those, they also had the zipper in. So this time it's going to be slightly easier because the zipper will be in its own, but that means that all three seams will actually kind of work the same way as far as where the two layers of skirt separate. Because if you've seen those videos, which if not, I will link those down below because those go more into depth on how to do this sort of process. But basically whenever you have a sheer layer on top and then a not sheer layer underneath and you're putting pockets or a zipper or whatever in there, you have the sheer layer and the opaque layer coming together, both going into say the zipper. And then at the bottom of the zipper, those two layers are going to separate and you're going to have the opaque layer being one layer there and the sheer layer being one layer here, each with their own separate seams, whereas up here they come together as one. So that's how it works for both a zipper and a pocket. Again, check out those other videos linked down below where you will get more in depth on how to do that because I've done that before, obviously, so I'm not going to do it right now. So anyway, the construction of this should be relatively simple until we get to the waistband or whatever I'm able to do for the waistband, depending on those fabric scraps that I have left. Keep your fingers crossed. I'm really hoping that I can get that nice wide waistband look out of there, but I'm not entirely positive that it's going to be possible. So 
knock on wood, hopefully we'll get there. That'll be a tomorrow thing. Anyway, I only have about a half hour left of sewing time here tonight. So I am going to attempt to put all of the skirt pieces together so that I can then let them hang out on the form to see if anything is going to drop on the bias. I have no idea what this sequin layer is going to do because of that stretch factor in there. So I have no idea how it is going to drop if the bias is going to be different than the straight, etc. Because everything might drop. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this before, but for the opaque layer, I did cut it three quarters of an inch longer than the other layer. And that is so that I can turn the hem and ideally have it be about a quarter inch shorter than the sequin layer on top, because I don't want to see any of this hanging out below the sequin skirt. I would rather have it a little shorter. So I'm hoping that's how it will work out. But again, we'll get to hems, like hopefully tomorrow, if not the next day. So I'm going to get to sewing this together. I may check in at the end of the night and just show you where I'm at. So this is lovely. I'm putting everything together. Everything's going fine. My iron kind of started to make a weird smell behind me while I was sewing. Didn't think much of it. Went and ironed this seam, ironed this seam on the sequins. No problems at all. But it wasn't steaming on here, which was weird because usually on the wool setting it still seams. And I was just finishing up the very bottom of this when suddenly it melted my fabric. I don't know if you can tell that. Maybe you can see it better actually on the blue. But it melted little holes in the mesh right here. And I mean, it's close to a seam. It's close to the bottom. So I don't know, maybe it won't be that noticeable. Maybe I could patch it or maybe even like taper the skirt in. I don't know the best method. I mean, it really is not super noticeable there, but you can see it. And I don't want it to catch on everything because there's big old holes here. But it's just like, seriously? And then I waited and my iron like cycled through and now it's fine again. And I like, I just pressed this. I did do a test piece first, but I pressed this and it was fine. And it's just like, what the heck iron? Update, it's literally like one minute after I just talked to you. And all of a sudden I thought I was hearing like crackling noises from my iron. And I was like, okay, what the heck? Maybe some sequins got on it. Maybe like the glue was melting, something like that. So I decided to wipe it on my table. No, it was so freaking hot that it just like made a burn spot on the cotton of my table. So naturally it is now unplugged, but this is not great. Cause I mean, I need my iron. How am I supposed to finish this? And it's still steaming, but like, whoo, I think this iron is done. So this is where we are at currently. The side front seams are both done. This is the one that I was able to press. This one has not yet been pressed because of the iron. So hopefully I will be able to get a new iron tomorrow at Target but that's where we're at currently. I did not do up the back seam. I am going to be waiting with the back seam until I get the waistband and the zipper on, at least with most of the back seam, because I like to, or I need to have that top free for the zipper. So there we go. It is the next day. I got a new iron, though I am not loving it yet. And uh, we will see if I actually keep said iron. And I am working out the mocking up or potentially lining layer for the waistband. So what I've done is basically I measured around the largest part of my rib cage and I measured the smallest part of my waist and I measured the length between the two and then I kind of just divided that up into trapezoids. There's not a ton of difference between rib cage and waist for me. Actually, it just dawned on me. I'm wearing really high rise tights because I had a gig earlier today and that may be changing my shape and I probably shouldn't be doing this for all of the measurements right now. But um, I've already made this mock-up, so we'll see how this goes. So basically, they're kind of like trapezoidal shapes. The front is also a little bit shorter than the back as far as the height. And I don't know, holding the pieces up, it was looking like I did not make it tall enough. Like I added the seam allowance in from where I measured here, but I think I just didn't measure long enough basically. So let's see how this goes. But this is the shape. So you can see like where the seams are, where it kind of does that funky join. I think that should hopefully even out on me. I'm not positive. We will see in a moment. 
it is now on. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more bulk being caused by this dress than there would be by whatever blouse or shirt I wear under the jumper dress, but it is definitely, it's feeling a lot of bulk. I don't feel like it's too small because I need this sort of tight feeling for it to stay up. I mean, it will have the straps attached, but it needs to be super fitted or else the skirt isn't gonna stay upright. So, I mean, fit wise, I think that this is okay. I'm not positive how it will work when the seam allowances that are like right here, what they will do because they need to be larger because they go past the smallest part of my waist. Maybe they'll just fold up. Maybe the seam allowances will just face upwards and that will be nothing that I have to worry about. But the one thing is it is definitely not tall enough. I'm actually thinking that I don't just need to add seam allowances up again, like a half inch thinking that I need to make it an inch taller because I kind of want it to hit a half inch taller, I think, and probably just about all the way around, maybe, yeah, probably even the back to make it just a little bit taller and then go for there. So I think that this is right size-wise. I'm just gonna make it taller, recut this lining, which is poly taffeta, and then cut it hopefully out of the other two. I'm gonna have to see where things fit on things and if I have to do much piecing on the sequin fabric and on the blue fabric. But I do like this taffeta lining, even though it doesn't breathe at all. Obviously it's poly taffeta, which is not the best thing for Disney. It is only around my waist, so that shouldn't be too bad. Also, we're not going when it's like 90 degrees. We're going when it's between like, I think about 55 to 75 degrees. So it shouldn't be too bad. And also it just helps everything to stay up and almost acts kind of like a little bit of a girdle. So yeah, I think that I'm on the right track here and I just need to make it taller and then cut it out of everything. So what I've done here is that for each of the three pieces, I have put together the cotton twill and then the taffeta back to back and I have flatlined them together using the serger. But sergers do not like sequins, so I don't even want to try that sort of thing with my serger. So this part now has been cut out and pinned to the top and I am going to baste around all of the edges on my sewing machine because sewing machines do much better with sequins than sergers do because of that blade and multiple needles and all of that. So once those are all basted around, then I can start putting them together with the sides and then I can also set the waist of the skirt to to this here and then this will be the zipper. This is the center back so that will be the zipper and then once the zipper's in then I will bind around the top but that's all I have to do. So the wide belty portion is all put together now. You can see the side seam there and I've also gone and marked along here for the thirds and also the sixth so that I can match them up with the skirt since there are three and then I've marked centers on each of the skirt pieces so that I can match up those sixths with it as well. I also ran gathering threads along the top of the skirt. There's not a lot of ease there. There's maybe an inch or two of extra ease per section but obviously that needs to get pulled up somewhere. So I've done them in a different color in this dark purple color so that I can easily see which ones are those and which ones are the basting threads because since I did not do the basting threads as gathering threads and now I can go ahead and pull this up to fit this and sew it all together. All right, so a skirt is attached to the waistband section and the zipper is even in the back. I amazingly did not have any troubles with the zipper at all. So knock on wood that I don't have any troubles as I'm wearing it because that went almost too smoothly to be believed. And now I have to hem the skirt. I'm going to bind the top of the waistband here and this should just be easy, like coming down about half an inch right here. And then once that is done, I can add the straps. The straps are just gonna be straight strips of fabric of the blue under fabric and then the glitter over. I should have exactly enough of the sparkle to do that. And they'll probably be about one and a half inches wide, something like that. And they will just go 
about like right here-ish and up and over and they will cross in the back. So that should be nice and easy peasy. And then that's it. So I'm gonna do a machine hem on the blue layer of the skirt. I'm just gonna press that and turn it over and sew it by machine. And then this I'm gonna sew on the binding, the one side by machine and then sew it by hand on the other side. And then I can get to tackling those straps. I just wanted to point out this silly little detail that makes me really happy, which is that the thread that I used for sewing down the binding is rainbow variegated thread. And it makes me happy because it kind of goes with all of the variation in color of the blue and pink sequins. So that's all. Now I am starting to work on the straps. I've done a little test strap here, which my test on this was to see if I could actually just take the sequiny fabric and instead of making it go all around the strap, to just fold in the edges just a tiny bit and top stitch down and see if that would be obtrusive. I don't think it was obtrusive, so I'm going to go with that because otherwise I will have to piece the length and I think that would actually be more obtrusive than having the top stitching on here. So this is what I've cut for the straps. This is four inches wide. These are about like two and an eighth, two and a quarter. At some points they get down to two and an eighth because that was as wide as the piece of fabric was. And this is like part of the longest piece of fabric I had left. And again, it was four and a quarter inches wide at one point. So I have cut the strips here. They're all 36 inches long. I'm not going to need 36 inches, I don't think. I thought I was going to only need 33 inches, but then I measured the jumper dress that is similar to this style that is a Disney movie poster print that I made a few years ago, and that one, the straps are 35 inches. So just to be safe, I cut 36 inches, and hopefully this will be enough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these pieces hot dog style like that, do a seam all along there and turn that tube and try to center the seam in the middle of the back of the strap. And then these will go over and get top stitched. So on my tester piece, I did try to press down the edges first, but honestly, this fabric does not like to stay pressed down like that. So I don't know that it really gave me any more advantage to just folding it over and then sewing it as I was folding it basically. So anyway, I am going to do all that, put that together, and then we will figure out the fit of the straps. So I just tried a new method for pressing this tube that worked like a dream. So I just had to show you. So basically I'm just laying the tube flat. I've already sewn the stitch here and I am pulling back one side of the seam allowance to open up the seam allowance like this, and then just pressing it like this, making sure not to get this edge of the tube in there and just pressing the whole thing and then using my tube turner to turn it. And oh my gosh, it was fantastic. Look how cleanly this wound up getting pressed. It was just beautiful and so easy to center. So yeah, highly recommend this method. These are the tube turners that I use. I've mentioned these in a bunch of other videos, but they are the fast turn tube turners. I will leave a link below. You just go like this, scrunch it all on there until you get to the end. Try to get the seam over the end like that. It doesn't always work out super perfectly, but try to. Take your little wire part, put it in the tube, and ideally poke the wire through the seam. It doesn't always want to poke through the seam, like this time it didn't go, it went next to the seam through the fabric, but that's okay. And then you just pull that back. and twist this out. And here is the tube. And because of our nice pressing method that we just did, it is super, super easy to just center that, press, and have a strap. So it's now time to fit the straps. I started by just taking the straps like in the back while the dress was still on the form and pinning them to the back. They are spaced two and three quarters inch away from the center back each strap and they're angled so that they can do that cross in the back like that. 
and then I put the jumper on and pulled the straps over the front and saw where they wanted to be lengthwise. Now one thing I did go and check was the other jumper dress that I made a few years ago in this similar style. I checked the distance between the straps in the front and it was six inches. Where I had pulled these over and pinned them, it's actually more like five and a half or five and three quarters. It's pretty close to the six, but it is smaller. And I'm hoping that that might alleviate some of the whole like, oh, the straps want to go this way over the boobs. Cause the hard part about a dress like this, when you are more well endowed in the chest is that they're going to want to go off to the side. So I did actually think about just pulling the straps to the side to begin with, but that just makes you look really like weirdly wide just right here because up here they're still narrow and then they go wide here so I didn't want to purposely put them that way and I decided instead it would be better to try to get them more narrow so that they would try to stay over the bust where you want them to be or at least where I want them to be and then if they fall they fall the other thing is I do have to check the tautness right now I've just pulled and pinned. I didn't check to see if they were even on either side and I didn't check really. I think they might need to be just a hair shorter, like a quarter inch shorter. Well, maybe a quarter inch this one and like three eighths of an inch or something like that on this one or even a half an inch. This one feels a little bit longer, but because if you don't have them taut enough, they will just slip off. If you have them taut, ideally they will stay over your boobs. That's not a given. It might not happen, but that's the ideal. So that is what I'm aiming for, is for them to stay right over here, right vertical, just like this. And again, the back looks really nice. It's doing a great job of making the back of the skirt stay up too, which is, that's exactly what I wanted. So yeah, I think we're in a pretty good place. I am going to take this off and check to see just how even these are and also see how even they are from the center because I didn't check like, oh, this is the center. I need to make them this far from the center, this far from the center. I do want them to be even distance from the center. So I'm gonna check all of that, but otherwise, I think they're pretty, pretty darn close. I don't even really feel like I would need to try it on again. I just need to make sure that we're even and then I can go ahead and sew them in. I am probably going to sew these by hand. I really want to sew them by machine, even just maybe what I might do is I might do a line of machine stitching right here at the edge, kind of like how these have the stitching right at the edge and then tack down the rest of what's hanging below that by hand. I know I have way too much extra hanging down. I've got probably about three inches that's actually hanging down in here. So I did not need to make them the full 36. I was probably pretty spot on when I was thinking 33 originally, but just to be safe to compare them to that first dress, I did make them the 36 inches so that they could cover that dress's 35 inches just, you know, cover all the bases because it's so much better to have extra than to be too short. I am going to cut off that extra. All I need really is about a half an inch or so, maybe an inch if you really want to be safe, that hangs down underneath and then that can get tacked down around the edges. So yeah, we are pretty darn close. The only other thing that I have to do is I did do the hem of the blue skirt yesterday, but I have not yet hemmed or I have not yet checked the length of the hem of the overskirt. So the blue skirt I found, this one really did hang out everywhere that I had a seam, which those seams were on the bias. So that means right here and right here in the back, they were like full on triangulating themselves at the meat. So I really had to smooth a lot of that hem off. Also, for some reason, the front of the skirt was hanging low. I don't know if that was maybe an issue that I had while I was cutting because this is actually the straight of grain, but it was definitely, it sloped downward like this. So I wound up having to cut a fair bit of that off and hem that up a little tighter. So I know right now that the sparkle length is hanging particularly low in the front. I haven't checked the rest of the place but I'm going to cut off the excess, which is, you know, scary. And I'm going to sew these straps in place. And the next thing you are going to see is the final dress.
guys, I cannot even begin to tell you how thrilled I am with how this turned out. Like this is exactly everything that I wanted it to be. I am so entirely happy with it. This was such a fun, quick, relatively easy project. I mean, working with sequins or a weird sheerish fabric will complicate anything and working with very minimal yardage will complicate anything. But beyond that, like, this wasn't that bad at all. And I am so freaking excited to wear this at Disney World. I'm gonna blind everyone if it's sunny also because I was catching the light and just the light everywhere shimmering off of this was so much. But yeah, I am just absolutely so thrilled with how this came out. And also I think it's really just really freaking cute and flattering and so happy. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this quick project, this quick last minute project for my Disney World trip. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patron, Sharon. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!